Welcome back everybody. How are we all doing? So last episode we built the lava sucker and I've put it to work removing some more lava pools from the world. I mean, yeah, it's not perfect. I have to help it out a little bit. But yeah, that's pretty cool. It was a really cool build. And you guys seem to like it. I mean, as as always, your your feedback is is always just the most kind and encouraging words it really it really spurs me on to want to make more videos you know I, I'm really grateful I, f I feel like this little community we've built around this channel is probably one of the most positive encouraging kind communities I've, I've ever seen oh I guess there's no wind today <laughs> no I, I would I was finding it was causing quite a lot of lag, so I've just stopped it spinning and yeah, it, it seems to be running a little bit smoother. I've, the views distance we've got is, is already pretty hard on my GPU, but yeah, it just looks so beautiful. Anyway, last episode we made this lava pool removing machine and what shall we do this episode? So the whole reason for making the lava thing, the lava thing, the lava sucking machine was to extend this wheat field even bigger than it is right now. I, I know that's probably unnecessary, but I, it, it kind of doesn't feel finished to me. I mean, there, there are a few other things in this world that aren't finished, but yeah, we'll, we'll get around to those. But I'm thinking it needs to extend past this big oak tree down to where the lava pool was and then I mean let me get there first <laughs> so yeah almost up to reaching that forest over there and then on this side wrap around the oak tree over where the lava I'll fill that in I'll fill the lava pool in and then extend the wheat field down over where the lava pool was um, and, and then kind of bring it up to meet with that path and then I'll build a, a cobble wall along the edge of the path. But yeah, I think extending the wheat field is not exactly great content. So I, I have something else in mind. Something to go over here. You see, we, we built the wheat field and we built the windmill, but we've kind of missed a step. Turning the wheat into grain and storing the grain is a whole step in itself and all of that grain would be stored in a granary so how about over here we build a large granary tower to store all of the grain from this giant wheat field hmm. so I've done my research I mean of course I've done my research I'm I'm such a nerd when it comes to things like this. I, I just really like to know how how it was done. You know, back in the day, how how was this process carried out for the days of factory farming and automation? And yeah, it just kind of fascinates me the processes behind everyday things like bread. How is bread made? <laughs> so you know, you need the wheat. And then the wheat goes through a process called threshing, which nowadays is, is it happens in a giant thresh, threshing th threshing machine. Um, but yeah, back in medieval times and further, 
people would just have to thresh the wheat themselves. But, you know, kind of. I guess that's where the word where the word comes from. Like thresh, thresh the wheat on the ground to break the grain um, kernels, seeds. I don't know, whatever grain is, to break that away from the actual long stem, the long piece of wild grass, which I guess essentially is kind of what wheat is, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a, a botanist or whatever you'd need to be to know all about wheat. But yeah, to bring this back to Minecraft, I think we're, we're going to need some kind of structure, some kind of building here. Not, not a home, not a house, but something to store the hay bales, um, which would then be threshed by the villagers to be turned into grain. And then just up there, we'll have a big granary tower storing the piles and piles of grain ready to be transported to the to the windmill to be turned into flour yeah and then that's that step that process filled out quite nicely wheat to grain to flour and then i guess in a future episode we'll take that further and flour to dough to bread where we'll need to build a bakery but yeah so let me i think first probably the best thing for me to do first is to connect that road down by the river and just bring bring the road up here so that this area is connected to the to our road network and then i can get to work planning what kind of a structure needs to exist here to thank you guys by the way for the support on my second channel it's it was kind of a I guess it's kind of a big deal you know putting your yourself your face out there you know that's that was the face reveal <laughs> um, which is if you think about it too too much can be kind of scary I guess but yeah it's, it is what it is, you know, we've all got a face. <laughs> um, I think the longer you leave it, it could even get to the point where, with Etho, you know, where people desperately tried to find out what he looked like. Um, because the mystery surrounding it just became so fascinating. But yeah, you guys have seen what I look like now. Um, and it kind of, it's like a... a a hurdle once you're over it eh, it's done and now now you can now I can make more videos with my face and I just I don't really care it's, it's no there's nothing there's no mystery anymore there's no special reveal um, but yeah you you guys of course as as I honestly as I expected because you're all just so lovely was just yeah encouraging really supportive and um, yeah thank you it's it's making me want to make more videos on that channel. Think of interesting things, interesting video ideas to explore um, and share stuff with you. And in the process, I'll get to learn more about filmmaking and editing and hopefully my skill set around all that kind of stuff will steadily grow as time goes on. And each new video will be an improvement I, I would hope <laughs> no I'm sure it will and and it's it's fun it's exciting it's like when I first started making these I, I didn't really know how to do it um, I definitely I think I leaned in a little too hard to the hey guys this is a very calming Minecraft channel you know it, which was the vibe I was going for but I 
I think maybe f- now when I go back and watch the f- first few episodes of Echo Builds, um, yeah, it's a little bit cringy to me. Um, it's just, it feels a bit forced, I think. Like, I think I naturally have quite a calming tone to my voice, so I, I don't need to overdo it. I think just the way I speak normally is, is pretty relaxing. Well, that's, that's what you guys seem to say anyway. Um, but enough rambling. I have connected this area to the road down there, brought the road up here, and kind of flattened out an area and, and laid, laid a bit of a foundation. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking here in this, in this space should be some kind of structure, something kind of like a barn, but not a barn. <laughs> it's just a, a building that stores hay bales um, and so that they, you know, they don't get wet in the rain until they can be threshed and processed. And then just up here, um, this is where there'll be kind of a big round granary tower. Like I, I've been Googling and I, I don't know if this, I've learned this from just playing games, maybe <laughs> like Age of Empires, but granaries historically it seemed weren't really round towers, maybe in some places. Um, but yeah, I think they were just buildings where you stored grain, like square, normal roofed buildings. But yeah, I have this image in my head, probably from, from classic games like Age of Empires, of the round granary tower, kind of like a, an ancient form of a, of a silo. Um, so yeah, that's what I want to build. <laughs> Whether it's particularly historically accurate or not, I I just think that would look really cool, like a a round tower, um, with like a ladder on the side and a a winch to winch the sacks of grain up to the top to be poured in, and then you go inside and there's just a big pile of of grain. So I am going to plan all this out, try and design something gather all the things I'm going to need to build it and then build it and then I'll bring you guys back Here's what we're looking at. We've got the granary tower and yeah that looks really cool and the barn kind of thing. The, the hay bale storing structure. Um, yeah I like it. It's kind of similar style to our village but slightly different you know. Um, we've got another one of these carts uh, using thatch from the quark mod maybe and then straw mats from farmers delight mod that's kind of meant to resemble dropped pieces of hay you know because there would be hay all over the ground around here um and then another empty cart and 
Yeah, let me show you. Let me show you inside. It's it's not really an inside. It's not really an interior, I guess. Well, no, upstairs. Upstairs is an interior. Um, but yeah, it's it's just hay storage. Kind of like a barn, right? An old-fashioned barn. Um, yeah. <laughs> There's not a lot to say about this. It's a building that stores hay. Um, but I like it. I quite, I quite like that we're kind of a bit further out of the village. You've got the some more kind of agri agricultural buildings. You know, the granary and the hay barn. Um, but yeah, this, this was kind of the main image I had in my mind. Just this grain-filled tower. Um, yeah, I got the thatch and yellow concrete powder. To try and resemble grain. And it's not, there's not really a texture in this game that's particularly grainy. Um, yeah, I've got the, uh, a, a winch to pull the sacks of grain up to the top. Because I, I suppose when the tower gets too full, you, you won't be able to just pour it in from the front. So, you know, you've got to climb all the way up here and pour it in from the top to make the pile even bigger. But yeah, this, this is what I've built. Um, and I guess now, now I can extend the grain, the wheat field, down to the stone wall we've built. Um, and I think that will really tie it all in. Um, and my other idea, that last thing, the functionality I want to add is when I harvest the massive wheat field and I've got all of the wheat and seeds magnetized to me because of the heart of the sea, it would be great to be able to just come here and it get, all get sucked from my feet. Um, maybe up here, maybe I could install some hopper minecarts under the floor here or... <laughs> Uh, or maybe maybe just down here. So I'm, I'm all of the magnetized items are at my feet, and I just stand here, and there's hopper minecarts underneath me, and all the wheat just gets sucked away. So I think that would be a good bit of functionality for when I actually harvest this giant field. So let me figure that out. Okay, well, that took a long time bringing this wheat field down to the wall. It's, it's a huge area, um, but yeah, it's done and it looks pretty amazing. And I did also get the functionality going in here. Um, and I think I've managed to kind of hide it away into the aesthetic of this building. And yeah, designing it has actually made this building look even cooler, I think. So camouflage is kind of supports for the building. Uh, these like barrel lines, one will have all the wheat and one will have all the seeds. So when, when we harvest the, the massive wheat field and all of the, the wheat and seeds are just kind of being magnetized to our feet because our inventory is full, we can just come up here, climb the ladder, head to the top of the silo, the granary tower, um, and just stand here, and it should all get sucked away, because under these um, canvas rugs that are meant to just kind of be dropped bits of hay, got two shoots, two smart shoots. Um, there, let me show you, let me, let me get in there and show you. So, yeah, two smart shoots, one can only suck wheat, the other can only suck seeds. And the chests that they both go into have these um, stockpile switches on them. And if we put two redstone transmitters and set the frequency of this one to 
uh, wheat, wheat, and, and seeds, seeds, seeds on the other one. So when the chests are full, the stockpile switch will give a redstone signal and it will be wirelessly transmitted down to the other bit of functionality that I've built into this, um, which is down here. <laughs> uh, so underneath the granary, I have a little hidden trapdoor. And if we go down here, basically when the system is overflowing, I, I'll set it so that the redstone receivers unlock the chests which are above here and they go into the composters and turn the excess wheat and seeds into bone meal. So I just need to put the receivers down here, set the same the same like code, I guess, so that it, it transmits to to each you know, the signal that was see oh my why can't I, <laughs> I can't read. Just press just do two seeds. Oh I put it in the composter. Oh my god. Alright, let me go and get more seeds. Yeah, basically the one upstairs that has two a wheat wheat code will transmit down here to the same one with the wheat wheat code and then same with the, the two seeds. But yeah, I need to actually set it to the same code of two seeds. So let me let me get up there. Why can't I reach this? Ugh. Just just go go two seeds. There we go. That's the frequency, right? Two seeds is the frequency, and then um, change these to receivers. So now, oh no, they need to be they need to be giving a redstone signal normally in their, their, their default state needs to be on so that they lock the smart shoots that are under the barrels. This this is kind of getting quite complicated and I'm probably not <laughs> I'm probably not explaining it very well. Um, but yeah if I invert this just yeah invert signal. So now by default they are sending the redstone signal downstairs that will be locking the smart sheets. And then when these chests get full, then they'll, they'll change the signal, they'll turn off the signal, which will... Um, <sighs> am I... <laughs> is this making sense to anybody? Basically, yeah, look, the, the redstone signals are being... They're, they're on and they're locking the smart sheets right now. So if we go up into the granary, Fundamentally, all, all of this complicated nonsense is so that when these barrel lines are full of either wheat or seeds, the excess will get turned into bone meal. That's, that's basically it. So we get, what, one, two, three, four, five barrels worth of storage of wheat and seeds. Anything extra becomes bone meal. So yeah. That's that's the functionality of the of the granary, which is actually kind of cool. It's actually really cool. I just did a terrible job of explaining it. So I think the last thing we should do in this episode is attempt a harvest. I'm going to run around with my with my hoe, um, and thankfully Quark adds the ability to harvest a five by five area with a diamond hoe, which is makes this a lot quicker. I'm going to run around this giant field, harvest the whole thing, and then come here, stand on these two smart shoots, and just let all of the se seeds, the wheat and seeds, get sucked down into the granary. Um, and we'll see how much we get. We'll probably fill all of these barrels and then make turn loads of it into bone meal. So I'm going to do that. Okay, well that, that's barely any of the field harvested, but I've already got so many items magnetized to me, following me around. So let's, let's just go and test it out. <laughs> oh, that looks crazy. It's like a snake following me. 
I, I can't imagine trying to harvest without the quark mods giving me both a 5x5 five five area and being able to just right click. I, I mean, vanilla harvesting is just so slow in comparison. You have to, you know, actually break the wheat and then replant the seed. So, nah, I couldn't go back to that. Okay, go on, suck it all up. That's all the wheat. And now the seeds. Amazing. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, I've still got loads left. Here, take all these, take all these seeds. Empty this inventory. And instantly, instantly suck down. Amazing. So yeah, there we go, it works. And um, we've got barrels and barrels of wheat. Oh, <laughs> not, that, not that many. And barrels and barrels of seeds. Yeah, loads of seeds. Can't reach that one. But yeah, there we go. The granary is complete. And it has function, and I love that. I love bringing function into these builds. This, this is an aesthetic, beautiful world that I'm creating for you guys. But, you know, I also, I also play here, and <laughs> it's nice when it has function for me. It makes my life a little easier. So, yeah. Oh, well, I had to change the layout in here. Apparently the shoots can't put items into composters, I found out. So yeah, I had to go back to using hoppers, and now here we go. We've got bone meal production, which is amazing. And I think, I think I'm gonna have to harvest this giant field in sections. I think if I try to do it all at once, I might just completely overflow the system. But, yeah, there we go. I think this granary is really cool. And we've got wheat for days, seeds for days, and eventually, bone meal for days. But yeah, I think that's gonna do it. I'd say we've finally finished the wheat field. We've got this little hay bale storage space. And of course, the granary. Something I like and want to share with you is the beautiful films of Wong Kar Wai. These are probably my favorite films of all time. He's my favorite director of all time. And there's just such a vibe to all of his films. They they look amazing. They feel like nothing else really. And I I kind of wanted to make and maybe I still will make a full video essay about how much I love Wong Kar Wai's films on my second channel. I might I might still do that. But yeah, I I recently watched 2046, which is one of his films, and it just reminded me how much I love this aesthetic, how much I love his films. They just, they capture something, and they just, they just kind of ooze this moody, cool, vibey aesthetic. I. It's, it's hard to put it into words, and I think if I'm going to write a video essay about it, I better figure out exactly what I want to say. But in the meantime, I'm sharing it with you guys on here. Just, if you love cinema, if you love film, and you're kind of like me, a little bit sick of the same superhero action nonsense movies that seems to be all <laughs> that gets made these days, this is something completely different. So maybe check them out. Um, and also, I recently made a letterboxed account. So if any of you guys use that app, care about cinema, you can follow me on there. I'll stick it in the description. But yeah, check out the works of Wong Kar Wai. There's something else. 
Anyway, I think that's going to do it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Let me know if you what you think of this granary tower. And yeah, I'll have a think about what I want to do next time. I've got a few ideas. Whilst I was, <laughs> whilst I was laying that giant wheat field that took hours and hours and hours, I was, I was thinking, I was planning stuff. Um, yeah, I came up with a few ideas. So we'll see what we do next time. Thank you so much for watching, as always. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys.